and welcome to Small Business Snippets, the podcast from smallbusiness.co.uk. I'm your host, Anna Jordan. We're looking at small business milestones, those real defining moments for an entrepreneur. Think landing your first client, launch day, and even your first major setback. Today we have Peter Watson, one of the managing directors of Distract, a social media marketing agency based in Lincoln. He'll be talking about building the Distract brand. Hi, Peter. Hi, how are you? Not bad, not bad. How are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, not at all. Right, let's crack on. Talking about the brand, at what point did you feel like it was complete? What were the, the main steps? So it, it, we have to go back to the start, really. So I started what is Distract Now in the third year of university, studying uh, marketing. And I basically said to my business partner, look, I think that a lot of marketing agencies are getting it wrong. At the time, it was called Chatty Im, which sounds and seems really bizarre now looking backwards. But from that point, about a year and a half into the journey, we decided to rebrand it and call it Distract. But the brand has always been there. We've always been positioned as these innovative uh, you know, young guys that are in a room. And in terms of wait, how long has it felt like a brand, for me, it's always been the brand. But it's just we've been given ourselves a platform now to shout more about it. So the key thing is in the marketing space, it's very noisy. There's lots of marketing experts out there that are constantly kind of taking up the airtime. So the first thing that we did, we decided to do was to just get in front of as many people as possible. When we started, we, did, we didn't have any money to do any advertising. It was really difficult for us to get you know, our voice out there to be seen as, as brand experts. So all we did was we shoved me around to lots of speaking events, lots of radio interviews. Anywhere we could put me, we literally just shoved me forward. And we really focus on building my personal brand rather than building the business brand because behind me was the agency, but it's much cheaper to push the person rather than pushing the company. And I think that was the major defining point that allowed us to build the business so quickly. Okay, so when you say you're pushing yourself, you're the face of the brand and I suppose that uh, feeds in from things like social media as well. It was very much Peter Watson first, distract second, because it's much, much easier to build that person, that, that kind of personal brand. And it kind of came to me really when I, when I read a book called Key Person of Influence by Daniel Priestley. He essentially said that every single business has to have a key person of influence within the business. It makes it much easier to scale. It makes the brand look more personal. And that's all we did. We just, we just advertised myself. So I'd be at every speaking event. I'd be writing every single blog post. I'd be doing everything, pushing myself forward. And then when I did the speaking events, it then put the, the brand distract in a really, really good light. If I'm the one giving all the expert advice, imagine how good the team is behind me. Imagine how good the agency is behind me. And that's all we did. We just kept pushing myself forward, putting me as the industry expert within the East Midlands. And that, honestly, that one move grew the whole business. And moving from that point, we saw that work really well for the first two years. We've now gone from doing key person of influence, which is, you know, branding myself, to what I call key people of influence. So what we've done is we've now decided to build the brand of all the members of the team in the office. So every single week, we'll put three videos out from the team, giving a piece of advice or information regarding their skill set. So you could have Sean doing a video about why Google advertising is important, because if I build the team's brand, that builds the Strax brand. And I, I think that's where many brands get it wrong. They think that they have to always show the brand over and over again. But in the service space, it doesn't matter if you're an accountant, a solicitor or a marketing agency, you are in the business of essentially putting a margin on people. And the way you get the best margin is by having experts. And the way they are seen as industry experts is how you brand those people individually. If you're an accountant, get a member of your team to talk to a video camera with some tips that goes out on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you're an architect, get someone from your team to give some tips to the audience about the latest changes in the architect world. Because first of all, giving your team the chance to do that is really empowering for them. And it's, it's amazing to watch them develop as kind of people and, and front runners. But B, it's just ridiculously good value for the, for the end user. Tell, if you tell them the latest marketing trends or you tell them about the latest tax advantages or whatever you may tell them, when they want that, they will always come back to you. So moving on from that point, what we've just started doing, because I hired a guy called Sam Spencer, who's a phenomenal videographer, and just said to him, the next stage in this brand game is for you to follow me around with the video camera, right? Which sounded ridiculous, and it still does sound ridiculous. And Sam's whole job is to film every single day of my life. So Monday to Friday, nine till five, he'll follow me around with the video camera. And every single day, he'll create some content that goes on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, giving some sort of tip that I said throughout the day. Now, these tips can come from the most bizarre moments. They can come from me in a client meeting. That can come from me doing a speaking event, me in a prospect meeting, me speaking to a member of the team. These, you know, these, these nuggets can come from any point. And Sam's job is to be there and catch when they happen. And that's been the most phenomenal uplift I've ever seen. What are the, the biggest challenges you encountered and what did you learn from them? The biggest thing I had to get over was the negative press that it brought. 
So Lincoln's quite a traditional place. We're a very forward thinking agency. We work with brands all across the UK, but Lincolnshire, the business community is it's re- relatively traditional in a sense. You might think it's not, but it is. And when you basically had an article going out saying, you know, Peter Watson, my director of Distract, hires a full-time camera to follow his every move. There was a lot of like, what is he doing? This right. guy must have an ego, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But in the back of my mind, I just knew it was the right business move to me. So whenever you're about to do something really, really innovative, everyone will laugh. Whenever someone laughs at a marketing technique, it's because it's so new. It's so ridiculously new that people are laughing about it because they think it's so weird. When it's weird, it's because you're the first to do it. If we look at Amazon, Amazon, are they own 51% of the e-commerce market in America. That is ridiculous. That is domination, 51%. Yeah. And they were one of the biggest spenders of advertising on uh, Google ads when it first came out. Now, that proves when you're one of the first to do something, you just win. But when no one else is doing it, it's always weird. So back when Amazon started using Google advertising, I guarantee people were saying, oh, why aren't you putting advertising on TV? Why aren't you using print advertising? Why aren't you doing the normal stuff? Same principle, same principle today. When you push the boundaries, everyone finds it weird, but generally it always works out. So have you found that since then, people have been more receptive to it or is the reception still much the same as it was? Um, it's a lot more receptive than before um, because people are now seeing what I'm doing with it. I think at first people were like, why is he doing this? What's the need and what re- what's the requirement? But now, you know, you go on Instagram or you go on LinkedIn or you go on Facebook, whatever platform you go on, and you'll see the content in action. So it's not just me and Sam walking around with a video camera anymore. Now it's educational pieces of information that help your business grow. And that changed everything because now it's a benefit. And I think people just didn't understand it to start with. But now they understand that this was all a marketing thing. You know, and when uh, clients or prospects come to the meeting, I always say, look, do you know what we do with the camera? And they'll say yes or no. I explain it and they have the option to be filmed or not be filmed. It's up to them. It's always up to them. It's never forced in their face. But a lot of people are now saying yes. A lot of people want to be on the camera. Don't ask me why, but it's more yeses than noes. And then we found that what that's done is it's naturally built our brand. It's naturally got us to a point where we're seen as the experts in the field and we have never, ever had a problem with lead generation because of it. I think far too many brands, especially in the service sector, focus on getting leads in all the time rather than thinking about the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the brand. Because yeah. if, you're fo- if you're focused on just getting leads all the time, the moment you turn that advertising off, your lead stops. But if you focus on doing brand all the time, and you turn the advertising off, your brand stays. And I suppose it, it lets your customers or potential customers get to know you as well, which makes them more comfortable. This personal branding thing is bigger than everyone anticipates. This personal branding thing I've been thinking about doing as you know, with Sam, this sort of thing for about two years, but I never really had the confidence to do it. But within the last three or four months of us doing this, it's had tremendous upside. And I'd, I'd tell anyone, I'd recommend anyone to do it. Actually, on that note, how do you feel about influencers in marketing? So the influencer space is very interesting right now. There's been a lot of scams with fake followers and fake bots, et cetera, in the, especially in the Instagram world. It's a very interesting space to be. Now, for me, influencers have a massive space in the advertising world because they have the ability to turn very, very cold traffic that know nothing about you to warm pretty quickly. We have a client we do a lot of work with, Mrs. Hinch, the, the cleaner, on uh, this morning quite a lot for her, in, you know, her Instagram posts, and that works tremendously well. So I do think the influencers have a massive potential, but, but here's the thing that I really lean towards. When you pay an influencer to do something for you, you have that credibility for that moment. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just focus on making yourself an influencer first? Because then you can use that over and over again. Like if, for example, over the next six months, you know, me and Sam keep building my brand and keep getting me to different places and distract for whatever reason went bust. Yeah. It doesn't matter because I've already got my personal brand. I've already got the association with being a personal brand. But if I invested everything I had into distract and distract went pop tomorrow, I lose everything. So you're saying you could sort of carry on your brand? Yeah, exactly. So the great thing with, you know, with being a human is you'll be that human for, for the rest of your life, you know? So yeah. it doesn't matter. You, you can just do something else. Saying that, what we did, we built the brands through distract. So we got the best of both worlds. Coming back to you as a brand, uh, what did you play on the most to get the the brand message across? I I very much played on the fact I was young. I very much played on the fact that we were really innovative in what we did. And I've I've always stood by the fact that I'll be ridiculously honest. So when about a year and a half ago, I thought to myself that Twitter wasn't working as a platform. I didn't believe Twitter had a return on investment uh, at all for any business that we were using, especially for. So I remember doing a talk about a year and a half, two years ago, where I stood on stage and I said, I think Twitter's dead. Now, I got absolutely pounded by the local agencies and uh, some of the local press because it was such a ridiculous statement to make. 
But as myself, that's what I believe. And I, and I always stand behind what I believe. So I'll always be ridiculously honest with what we do. We're always really, really innovative in what we do. And I've always been the, the champion for the young entrepreneur. I've always been the champion for the young marketeer. So how did you respond to the backlash against your, uh, your Twitter talk? So I think, I think when it comes to anything, you know, everyone has the right to an opinion. Everyone has the right to believe what they want. And I didn't really respond too much to it. In fact, I joke and laugh with some of the guys about it now. Look, if I think Twitter's dead, that's on me. Our agency, that's on them. If you think something works, you go and do that. That's why there's multiple different agencies. That's why there's multiple different personalities. But I think the key thing here is just back yourself. You know, have faith in your own ability. Have faith in your own quality because that's what really matters at the end of the day. If I thought Twitter wasn't working but I was still selling it, that would go against everything I believed in. Yeah. Just out of interest, why didn't you think it had a, a return on investment? The average tweet has a seven-minute life cycle, i.e. you put it out there within seven minutes, it's pretty much gone forever. There's way too much noise on, on Twitter at the moment. It's like a fire hose. It's just like you scroll down and refresh it. It's just too much going on. The key thing that I said at this moment was, look, if you're going to put any time anywhere as a small business owner, focus on what brings the return on investment. You know, focus on what's going to bring money or, or brand value in the bank. And if I've got the option between spending 20 minutes on Twitter or 20 minutes on Facebook, I'll tell you right now that 20 minutes on Facebook is worth more for my business. So it's more a case of weighing up the pros and cons of each. So for somebody who is starting out as a small business owner themselves and they want to go down the, the personal brand route, what are the very first steps that they need to take? Make more content and stop worrying about things. Far too many people will not use video on LinkedIn because they don't want their face to be in the picture because they don't want to be seen to be on camera or whatever. First thing, and, and, I, and I truthfully mean this, forget what everyone thinks. Don't worry if people are going to laugh or going to mark or going to say anything. Just get it done. It's the biggest upside ever. The key thing is, is getting started. What kind of platforms should they start with? So it depends on the business, of course, but Instagram and LinkedIn are the two that are just tremendous upside at the moment. Instagram just seems to be dominating everything. LinkedIn has amazing organic reach. And what I mean by that is you don't need to spend any advertising to get good reach anymore. If you have a good connection base, it will automatically just really well organically. Facebook's getting really costly now from an advertising platform. And on top of that, organic reach is between two and 5%. So it's struggling. Video is the thing. I mean, as well as podcasts, podcasts are really over-indexing as well. I mean, small things, we're about to launch our own podcast within the agency and we'll also put a camera in the room as well. So we get video content for it on social. So we'll have the podcast and we'll have the video content for social media. It, it does yeah. bring another dimension to who you're interacting with. That's the other angle, which I haven't touched on is when you make content, make content that can be, have multiple uses. So as I'm on this podcast right now, there's a camera in my face, which is also recording this. And then we can break up moments of this podcast for other means as well. Although it's to your audience, it's also to my audience. And it's also to the 60 second viewer that's going to be on LinkedIn in a week's time. You know, it's about making that one piece of content just be outlasted. And then what I'll do, this will then go to our PR department who will then type up my opinion on something I've said. And now it's the press story, all from doing one podcast. On the back of that, Anna, we've just started um, the vlog as well, which is called Inside the Journey. And my plan is to document my whole business journey for the next 10, 15 years. So we'll go from a 25-year-old entrepreneur through to a 40-year-old entrepreneur. And I think that'd be an amazing journey to watch. And so we've called that Inside the Journey. And we're on episode 60, I think it is now. Do you think there's any small business where the personal branding really wouldn't work? Consumer products. Consumer products. So all service businesses, 100%. Yeah. Or consumer products, but I say that with like an asterisk because if you could create your own your own influencer for your field, then equally it would work. You'd have to do it very differently. Like if you imagine if Mrs. Hinch created her own cleaning products, mm -hmm. that would work really, really well because she's known for being a cleaner, like you know, to be like a, a really kind of cool cleaner. So mm -hmm. that's the same principle. So I would say everyone in the service space should be doing it 100%. There's, there's no asterisk on that one. But then in terms of consumer, there's one there. However, if you did it right, you can make it work for yourself. Well, unless there's anything you'd like to add, I think that's it for me. No, not really. I mean, I, I, what I'll say is come over and see the content, see it in real action. So we're, most of it goes out on Instagram. So it's Instagram forward slash PWATTO, which is P-W-A-T-T-O. And yeah. just, just, just come have a look and, and see what we get up to because you'll see in true form what it's about. Well, thanks ever so much for that, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you. You can find out more about Distract at distract.co.uk. You can also visit smallbusiness.co.uk for more guidance on how to build a brand. Thank you for listening.